praise your maker. Come, all you people, come and praise your maker. Come, all you people, come and praise your maker. Come now and worship the Lord. Come and praise your maker. Come, all you, come people. All you people, come and praise, come and praise your maker. Come, all you, come people. All you people, come and praise, come and praise your maker. Come, all you, come all you people, come and praise, come and praise your maker. Come now and worship the Lord. Hello and welcome to this service of worship at Church Online, Kilmarnock, today. Hello and welcome today to the service of worship at Church Online, Kilmarnock. Wherever you are, whenever you view this service, please feel welcome and feel at home with those who join with you each week as a family of God immersed in his love. Now, it's been busy in the church this past week. The decision has been made to unite the three churches represented at Church Online Kilmarnock, that is Kilmarnock South, Kilmarnock Rickerton, and Kilmarnock St Andrews and St Marnock's. The new church, for that is what it will be, will be called St Marnock's Parish Church, and will serve the communities formerly served by the three now uniting churches. Initially, two ministers will serve, that is myself and Jim McNaughton, and as we move on, one minister will take up sole charge, ably augmented at the present by Elaine Wardrop, the Mission Development Support Worker. The Presbytery heard the outcome of the congregational voting this past Tuesday. It was a very high turnout for such matters, and of the total votes cast in the matter of the union, 93% were in favour. We all know there is much work to do now, and there is an eagerness to get on with the work, God's work now. But before all this, I'll simply hand over to my friend Jim to say a few words of welcome and begin our worship today. Thank you, Taylor. Good morning and welcome to worship on this the last Sunday of June, with the summer stretching out before us. And thank you for sharing worship with us today. As Taylor mentioned, the overwhelming vote in favour of the three-way union is a very encouraging start to this new vision for the church in Kilmarnock. Everything from St Marnock Street here and south will fall into that new parish. Once we've had our holidays, the service of union will take place and that is likely to be on Tuesday the 17th of August. And then the work will begin as we get to know each other and work out how to be the most effective church we can be for the people of Kilmarnock. And that will involve working with each other, but also working with others. Taylor and I have already had more than a year where we've been working together successfully as a team. And so I'm confident that as we begin this new chapter in the life of the church in Kilmarnock, that we will be able to do much more together than what we were able to do apart. And it's in that spirit of unity that we worship God together today. Love divine. 
mine All love's excelling Joy of heaven to earth come down Fix in us thy humble dwelling All thy faithful mercies crown Jesus thou art all Time for your prayer now. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we approach the summer holiday, we give thanks to you. We give thanks for all the learning that has taken place in nursery, in school and at home, for the talents and gifts that have been shared. It has been a year like no other. We are grateful that you walked with us through all the difficult times and helped us to do our best. Lord, we ask you to bless everyone in our school community, teachers, classroom assistants, helpers and friends. Over the next few weeks, we will be apart again, but we are filled with the happy memories 
of all the nice things we have done together and our many blessings. Watch over us in the weeks ahead as we play and relax and spend time with our mums, dads, relatives, friends and neighbours. Father, pour out your love and help us to come back in August refreshed and ready to learn. And now let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hi everyone. Here I'm going to show you one of my favourites I'd like to share with you. Can you tell what this is? It's used to protect something. It's used in one of my favourite sports. Sometimes I would shout for... Have you got it? Yes. It's a golf club head cover to protect my driver. And this is a Highland Cow. And that's the logo for Rowland Castle Golf Club, where I'm a member. I wonder, what's your favourite? It's good sometimes to touch things. But we often hear, don't touch that, it'll break. Or put that down, your hands are dirty. Yes, some things are meant to be looked at and not touched. Other things are very touchable. It gives comfort and it helps us to learn. Some of you may have a favourite blanket that you like to touch as you go to sleep. Perhaps you have a teddy bear that feels soft and cuddly. The beloved bear makes you feel safe and warm. You learn more about the world around you by touching such things as stones or part of a tree. You know, you may want to go out and gather and handle these items. And here's some I've got for you today. There's a wee piece of driftwood. It's quite nicely shaped. Got that down the seashore. Stones. During lockdown, I painted a stone. And there's another one. Nice to feel and touch. A story in the Bible teaches us about touch and faith and we're going to hear in Mark chapter 5 today where a woman who had been ill for 12 years she heard about Jesus she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak she said if I just touch his clothes I will be made well the woman had great faith she believed that if she could just touch Jesus' clothes, she'd be healed of her illness. And even though Jesus, he was in a large crowd, he felt the woman touch his clothes. And he immediately felt the power go forth from him. And he said, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be cured. Of your disease. One of the lessons of this story is that Jesus did not say don't touch. He accepted the woman and showed kindness to her. She was healed because of her great faith. Jesus accepts each one of us and although we can't physically touch him, we can be touched, comforted and healed by his love. Amen. Sins and griefs to 
Please join me in prayer. We come together as your family, Lord, to praise and worship you. We recognise we are all different. We come with different hopes and different needs and different experiences. Some come as friends, some as strangers. But we come together today, your family. Thank you for inviting us, Father, into that family where we are accepted, valued and loved, precious in your sight. Forgive us, God of love, when we tarnish the word family, when we exclude others without thought, when we avoid the suffering of those we could help, when we discriminate between those we want in and those we want out. Forgive us and help us to see one another as you see us, children of God and part of the family. In Jesus' name, Amen. We turn now to the book of Lamentations. Lamentations chapter 3 and reading from verse 22. Hear the word of God. The Lord's unfailing love and mercy still continue. Fresh as the morning, as sure as the sunrise. The Lord is all I have, and so I put my hope in him. The Lord is good to everyone who trusts in him. So it is best for us to wait in patience, to wait for him to save us. And it is best to learn this patience in our youth. When we suffer, we should sit alone in silent patience. We should bow in submission, for there may still be hope. Though beaten and insulted, we should accept it all. The Lord is merciful and will not reject us forever. He may bring us sorrow, but his love for us is sure and strong. He takes no pleasure in causing us grief or pain. Amen. Oh, 
reading this morning comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and we read from verses 7 to 15. Listen for the word of God. You are so rich in all you have, in faith, speech and knowledge, in your eagerness to help and in your love for us. And so we want you to be generous also in this service of love. I am not laying down any rules, but by showing how eager others are to help, I am trying to find out how real your own love is. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Rich as he was, he made himself poor for your sake, in order to make you rich by means of his poverty. My opinion is that it is better for you to finish now what you began last year. You were the first, not only to act, but also to be willing to act. On with it then and finish the job. Be as eager to finish it as you were to plan it and do it with what you now have. If you are eager to give, God will accept your gift on the basis of what you have to give, not on what you haven't. I am not trying to relieve others by putting a burden on you, but since you have plenty at this time, it is only fair that you should help those who are in need. Then, when you are in need and they have plenty, they will help you. In this way, both are treated equally. As the scripture says, the one who gathers much did not have too much, and the one who gathered little did not have too little. Amen. Thanks be to God for this reading from his holy word. Let us unite our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you this day in the name of your Son, Jesus. We thank you for your unconditional love your goodness and your loving kindness to us, your people, who are called by your name. Great is your faithfulness, O God, and we praise you, for you alone are worthy. Keep us low at the cross and help us to patiently wait for you in obedience to your Holy Spirit by trusting your word of grace, even in the times when we can't fully understand. For scripture tells us that you are good to those who wait for you. Thank you, Father, for the many lessons you teach us through the difficulties we, we may suffer in this life. Help us to learn all the lessons you desire to teach us, 
knowing that your mercies are new every morning and that your love and faithfulness never fails. We pray that we might trust you implicitly in all the diff difficult circumstances of life we may be called to face and help us to wait quietly for your sure deliverance. We thank you, Lord, that despite our unworthiness, our sinfulness, you notice us. Whether we approach you like the woman brushing the hem of your garment, or like Jairus falling at your feet, you see us, you hear our prayers. Loving God, we bring before you all those who are this day destitute, homeless, or forgotten, those who simply do not know which way to turn. Make a way for them, we pray. May the unloved feel the warmth of your touch. You are the great physician, Lord. We bring before you all those who are sick. Touch them with your healing power, we pray. Merciful Lord, we pray for the leaders of our country. Grant them wisdom that they might govern in a just way with compassion for all people to your glory. We thank you, Lord, that we are able to freely gather to worship you without fear of persecution. We pray for all our Christian brothers and sisters around the world who face persecution just for knowing you. Build a hedge of protection around them, Lord, we pray. We thank you that you see our need, Lord. You acknowledge our hope. In these few moments of quiet, we bring our silent prayers for others before you in faith, with expectation in our hearts. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. This we pray in the precious name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus. Amen. And now a reading from Mark's Gospel, chapter 5, and from verse 21. Jesus went back across to the other side of the lake. There at the lakeside, a large crowd gathered round him. Jairus, an official of the local synagogue, arrived, and when he saw Jesus, he threw himself down at his feet and begged him earnestly, My little daughter is very ill. Please come and place your hands on her so that she will get well and live. Then Jesus started off with him. So many people were going along with Jesus that they were crowding him from every side. There was a woman who had suffered terribly from severe bleeding for 12 years, even though she had been treated by many doctors. She had spent all her money, but instead of getting better, she got worse all the time. She had heard about Jesus. So she came in the crowd behind him, saying to herself, if I just touch his clothes, I will get well. She touched his cloak and her bleeding stopped at once. And she had the feeling inside herself that she was healed of her trouble. At once Jesus knew that power had gone out of him. So he turned round in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? His disciples answered, you see how the people are crowding you. Why do you ask who touched you? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. The woman realized what had happened to her. So she came trembling with fear, knelt at his feet and told him the whole truth. Jesus said to her, my daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed 
of your trouble. While Jesus was saying this, some messengers came from Jairus' house and told him, Your daughter has died. Why bother the teacher any longer? Jesus paid no attention to what they said, but told him, Don't be afraid. Only believe. Then he did not let anyone else go on with him except Peter and James and his brother John. They arrived at Jairus' house where Jesus saw the confusion and heard all the loud crying and wailing. He went in and said to them, Why all this confusion? Why are you crying? The child is not dead. She is only sleeping. They laughed at him, so he put them all out, took the child's father and mother and his three disciples and went into the room where the child was lying. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha Koum, which means little girl, I tell you to get up. She got up at once and started walking around. She was 12 years old. When this happened, they were completely amazed. But Jesus gave them strict orders not to tell anyone. And he said, give her something to eat. Amen.
It's not every day that a song beginning with Les Merciers ends up as a worldwide pop hit record. But that's exactly what happened in 1967. John Lennon of the Beatles sang All You Need Is Love. The song was Britain's contribution to something called Our World, the first live global television link for which the, the band The Beatles were filmed performing it at EMI student studios in London on the 25th of June, 1967. The program was broadcast via satellite and was seen by an estimated audience of around 400 million people in 25 different countries. John Lennon's lyrics were deliberately simplistic to allow for the show's international audience. And it captured the ideals associated, those utopian ideals associated with what was now termed the summer of love. That great, happy, simple invasion in 1967. The first three lines of the song contain just one word, and that word is sung nine times. The word is love. That same song ends with reference to an early Beatles hit, not their first hit, but their fourth, She Loves You. It was all so simple in those days, yet I always question, why is it not so simple today? Why do we not simply love? Needing love, requiring love, offering love. Each of our readings this morning, and there were three, highlights the utter dependence on God and lamentations. In Mark's Gospel, it focuses on love, on our times of real need. And while the letter, the second letter to the church in Corinth highlights our equal dependency on love in times of plenty, when we can give so much to others. That utter dependence in lamentation can be summed up by these words from that passage. The Lord is good to everyone who trusts in him. So it is best for us to wait in patience. Mark's gospel displays need in Jairus concerning his daughter. And that woman who simply reached out and touched the hem of Jesus' garment as he went along his way to help. Each time that touch worked his love and that was real. The church in Corinth, that place of plenty is exemplified by these words from Paul. You are so rich in all you have, in faith, speech, and knowledge, in your eagerness to help and your love for us. And so we want you to be generous also in the service of love. Three lines from seeming, three seemingly unrelated books in the scripture, yet connected by one thing, and that is God's love. And our place both in that love and in the service of that love. All you need is love. Like that Beatles song, we need to begin with something. Why? Not ourselves. Why not begin this focus on love through us? Then the church can cry loud, love is all you need. God loves you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut up.
say now and I won't say then lonely And it's funny how the busiest life can feel so damned empty I tell you now this empty soul is aching But you let your children walk away from your door For everyone that walks there's a million more you talk of your programs, visions and dreams And I just want to scream Have you room for love? Have you space for me? Cause I'm not like you, you see Life can feel so damned empty. I tell you now, this empty soul is aching. But you let your children walk away from your door. For everyone that walks, there's a million more. You talk of your programs, visions, and dreams, and I just want to scream. Have you? Out and I feel talked down, useless And I can't get back because it's all a front Help me And it's funny how the busiest life Can feel so damn empty And I tell you now, this empty heart is aching but you let your children walk away from your door For everyone that walks, there's a million more You talk of your programs, visions and dreams And I just want to scream Cause I